Senator O'Mahony, our next speaker, Senator Niall O'Donnell, you also have eight minutes. Minister, I'm torn in relation to this bill, and I'm torn on a couple of fronts. The first thing that struck me is that my old primary school headmaster, General O'Toole, would be horrified to hear me come in and say all the nice things I'm going to say about rugby in the first instance. But nevertheless, I'll overcome that particular fear and carry on regardless, because I do think this is a very welcome bid. And while I do have concerns, which I'll touch on as other senators have done so in relation to the the process here. Minister, I do think it is a, uh, it is a very worthwhile uh, bid for all of the reasons uh, and more that have been uh, outlined. And I was familiar with some of the uh, initial preparatory work when uh, I was a member of Belfast City Council and they were assisting with uh, government colleagues in the executive and civil service in the north uh, in terms of looking at the bid and looking at the facilities that existed uh, obviously in uh, Ravenhill and uh, indeed uh, Casement Park which sadly uh, is in limbo and I think this, this bid really uh, adds impetus to the, the call for Casement to be redeveloped uh, and to see that uh, stadium realised for the benefit of the GAA uh, fraternity but also uh, for this bid and for sport uh, overall. Um, but uh, as I did say, uh, Minister, I, I share uh, colleagues' concerns. Um, I do think we uh, will put together uh, a significant, worthwhile uh, and achievable uh, bid that will uh, uh, reap benefits. Uh, so let me say that uh, in the first instance. Um, but I am uh, concerned about the, the manner, and, and you'll have heard this uh, in the other house. You'll hear it uh, today, in which uh, this has uh, almost been uh, rushed through. I mean, as I sat and I, and I listened, I couldn't help uh, but think of if we can push through legislation like this that sees such a significant financial commitment, why can't we push it through in relation to the housing crisis or in relation to the trolley crisis and, and all of the other? Uh, so that's fairly legitimate uh, criticism that we are going to take and I think have to take. Um, uh, but at, at the heart of it, uh, I do believe we can uh, progress to a positive outcome because I do believe sport uh, is, uh, pardon the pun, uh, a great game changer. Uh, it will benefit um, our economy. It will benefit our uh, offer uh, on the international uh, stage. Um, it will benefit uh, our local uh, hospitality and tourism uh, sectors. But most importantly uh, for me, uh, Minister, what it has to benefit is it has to benefit our local communities. It has to benefit our sporting clubs, whether they're rugby clubs uh, uh, or, or any other sporting uh, clubs. Because colleagues have touched on uh, the nature uh, of the All Ireland uh, bid, and Mary Lou uh, Macdonald often refers to me as Sinn Féin's All Ireland body. So I'm delighted uh, in, at the All Ireland uh, nature uh, of this bid because I believe we are better when we're united, we're stronger uh, when we're uh, united, and we can achieve more um, uh, when we're united. And that's manifested uh, brilliantly uh, on the rugby pitch uh, at an international level uh, for Ireland. Uh, Minister Saxon uh, Savin, uh, as you outlined, uh, deals with the inclusion of uh, committee oversight um, to uh, the legislation uh, and the bid. I think that's a welcome uh, achievement and, and will add very significantly uh, to the nature uh, of the legislation uh, uh, as it uh, not just passes uh, here today but as it uh, progresses. And I commend my own colleague, uh, Imelda Munster, for uh, securing that commitment and that particular uh, declaration from you that you'll commit uh, to doing that. I think that's a key uh, component that will give uh, rightful democratic oversight uh, to the members uh, of the Oireachtas as this uh, moves forward. Because ultimately, while we do have concerns, um, we all, I often hear in this chamber that we all need to pull on uh, the, the, the green jersey. Um, but it's only right and proper, given the financial commitment that is at stake, uh, which you have outlined uh, in your own contribution, Minister, that there is that democratic uh, oversight uh, and that members have the ability to engage uh, with you uh, as uh, we move forward. Uh, Forward. So, uh, you know, Guillaume Gahra, uh, er, Erin Billa, uh, August Erin Rakdiak, Guillaume Gahra, uh, er, and, and Comertus, August Inheritus, uh, Fonya and Corn, uh, Don the Comway Minister. Uh, I wish uh, the bid uh, every success. I myself look forward to sitting, hopefully, in a redeveloped Casement Park, um, watching t uh, the, the match, having paid for tickets, uh, let me say, in the first instance. Um, and I dare say my old uh, schoolmaster might even come along uh, with me by that time. So, good on, Thanks very much. After that, I'd like to first of all thank the senators, everybody, for their contribution, uh, and particularly, I suppose, the positive ones uh, that, that were, <laughs> were, were marked contrast to some of the contributions in the, in the other house. Uh, 
But the, uh, that doesn't mean that I don't recognize the need for the scrutiny which was referred to uh, by Senator Humphreys Senator Rosa, uh, and, and, and a lot of other senators uh, in the back row there, which is very, very important. And when you see a, a figure like this, 300 million plus, it is important that we are scrutinized. And if the, if the legislation is late, and if the result of the legislation being late, or some people going rush, and it has caused it to be scrutinized in these houses and in the Joint Committee, that's fine by me. I think it's a very good thing. And, uh, and uh, the uh, Sen Senator O'Donnell uh, Donald uh, re referred to the fact that uh, his colleague, uh, Deputy Munster, in the other house, uh, put down an, an amendment uh, saying we should come and, I should come and be accountable for what happens every six or eight months. And she did, and I responded to it by introducing an amendment which was slightly differently drafted, but, uh, and I acknowledged the fact, yeah, let's, yes. let's do it. No, let's no, come no. and explain ourselves. We have nothing to hide except from our competitors. That's all. We actually are very proud of what we're doing here. Uh, and we want people to see uh, that the sort of figures which are being banded around, which are 300 million plus, which, we, which, we, which, which you've talked about, are not actually, we're not really going to be on the line for that. I'll let the Minister to respond yeah, to both of you. So, Senator Donnelly. Carly, Minister, just to touch on very two uh, brief points, because they've kind of come out during the course of contributions from, from other uh, senators. In relation to the uh, Stadia redevelopment project, projects uh, in, in the north, there was put in place, just to, in, in reference to the access that Senator O'Sullivan and, and others uh, touched on, uh, a legacy project in terms of uh, utilising um, some of the uh, capital uh, money, and I understand there may not be capital money involved uh, in this particular uh, bit, obviously, but I think the, 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 the word and the aspiration around a legacy uh, of this bid, if successful, would be uh, very important. So it isn't a flash in the pan. And I actually do agree with you. I do believe that if successful, this has the potential to be transformative uh, and be very uh, positive. But it, it shouldn't just be confined to the one event or the one year. I think we should engage with how we look at uh, a, a legacy and encouraging people in the obviously in this instance rugby, but other sports and, and utilising this as an avenue to do so. Very briefly, uh, Les Carley, on the issue of uh, free to uh, our Minister, there is this kind of strange anomaly uh, that exists and uh, it's, it kind of runs contrary to the positive uh, all-Ireland nature of this bill. For, for, for me, and, and I shared Senator O'Riordan's disappointment in, in relation to the, the, the game at the weekend, um, but like Ireland international uh, soccer matches, uh, international rugby matches, some of the boxing at the Olympics um, was blocked to viewers in the north uh, as is and happens regularly all the time via satellite uh, subscribers and providers. So I appreciate it's, it's a very complex licensing uh, issue, um, but nevertheless, it's one that prohibits many sports fans access and being able to, to see, because in the North, RTE can only be obtained through a satellite subscription. Um, if people don't have that as part of their package, then they're not able to see um, even those games then that may be uh, free, to, free to her. So I appreciate it's, a, it's an anomaly. Um, it's a fairly complex one, Minister. It's one that really gets on everybody's goat, no matter who they are or where they're, they're from. I think you'll probably get the first ever joint protest um, in relation to rugby. If people can't watch it, um, they'll be that frustrated in relation to it. Absolutely. Um, so it's maybe some Minister, I uh, appreciate I'm throwing it on you, but I'll maybe uh, engage with you and your officials uh, on that further. But I just wanted to draw it to your Move attention. On to item two, so very briefly, I will let the Minister back in. The minister is not only the Minister for Tourism, but he's also the Minister for Sport and vice versa. So Minister, to conclude. Yeah. The, um, the anomaly to which you referred, I'll, uh, I'll refer back to you. I'm, I'm I can't go <laughs> the line. I, I, understand, I understand. That's all right. I tell you, the rugby fraternity would be raging if I didn't raise it. The yeah, that's fair enough. I had the chance. Uh, what was your principle? And on the legacy, on the leg <laughs> like on the legacy issue, I, I take your point about this. This shouldn't be a flash in the pan and once, and once off. The tournament budget provides for investment in approximately 40 training facilities across the country for visiting teams. Many of these facilities will be in the existing rugby and other sports clubs, which will leave a legacy of improved facilities for all those clubs. The tournament budget will also provide for a legacy programme for the development of the sport. Although there will be some temporary facilities put into host stadia, the permanent facilities, for example, floodlights, will leave a positive legacy for those stadia. There will also be the legacy of long-term benefit for tourism from the profile and the prospect of repeat visits. I mean, I think the legacy is, in some ways, it's intangible, but I think it's, it's, it's going to be 
very, very real, hopefully. And the idea of a joint protest, I will join in the, in the protest as well. And you as well. And it'll be the first time I've marched with Sinn Féin. <laughs> You'll be very welcome. We take a traditional route to... Uh, on that, on that, uh, can I just ask...